Hello my sweet friends, welcome back to my channel and happy Wednesday to everyone. I am so glad that you could be here to spend some time with me today. And if you're new, I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button to join our crafty little family. So for today's project, we have a scrap your stash. And because the collection that I am working with had an entire tablet of journal cards, it inspired me to create a book in a box or rather insert where I could utilize many of those journal cards as focal images as well as photo mats or journaling opportunities. So here is our box it is finished on the front and the back and it has these beautiful tab topped inserts here all tied together with beautiful coordinating ribbon. So let's go ahead and remove those inserts and I will show you how we're able to get all of these beautiful layers tucked inside of that box. So this will be a perfect untraditional style scrapbook. It is also nice that you can remove these inserts and work on them without their being in a spine so that you can have all of these elements flat on the surface. So this was really fun and fast to make. It was pretty easy and I did get through quite a lot of stash paper. So if that sounds good to you, then stick with me and we will make this together. So we're going to work with this Fruit Paradise collection today. This is from Prima. I did pick up the A4 size tablet as well as the journaling note cards. And this is not a current collection. I did get this during my time on the design team for Funky Junky Boutique. And so this is not going to be currently available. However, they do have uh, a large selection of Prima products that would be easily substituted or just pick a theme that you like or a collection and substitute that. All the measurements should work equally fine. So that's what we're going to work with today. Voice over Ginny here just stepping in to let you know for the rest of the video I will be switching to a voice over so that we can move the tools in and out without creating all of those clunking noises that tend to affect the microphone. So if you notice the difference in the voice quality that is why. So we're going to start first with the base and I'm using 110 pound card stock for this. The measurement for this base is going to be five inches high by nine inches wide. It's scored at four and also five. So you're going to get that one inch of depth, which will be nice for all of our inserts. The next thing we want to do is add the sides to hold those inserts in. And we're going to continue to work with 110 pound card stock. The measurements for these are going to be four inches high by three inches wide. It's scored at one and also two. I put a little bit of double-sided adhesive there. This is a good place to use your two glue combo. And so I'll just add a line of my Tombow here alongside the tape. And we'll do that for both sides. And then I think the best way to get everything lined up is to set them on their side on the top of your work surface so that everything will be square and evenly lined up. So I'm going to hold that side piece and I'll bring the base into it so that I can get those score lines folded and bring the edges right into it. You see now I'm getting everything lined up nice and neat there. The double sided adhesive will hold that in place while the glue sets up. So that two glue combo is really going to be useful here. Make sure you give it a good pressure though so that there's a good contact for all of those adhesives. Now the reason why I'm wrapping the outside around the outside instead of sticking those flaps inside is because I don't want the inserts to get caught on anything. When we bring them in and out of the box, I want them to be nice and smooth. So those flaps are on the outside very intentionally. So now that we have both of the sides on, you'll notice that we do have a bit of a flap there and I want to have a smooth surface. So I'm going to add 
an additional piece of 110 pound card stack here. This is four inches high by five inches wide. Not only does this cover that uneven surface, but it does add an additional layer of thickness, so it will be even more sturdy. So I've just got my double-sided adhesive tape on there, and I'll bring that corner together and then line up the bottom and side and that will ensure that it goes on nice and evenly. So I'm gonna flip that over onto my work surface and then press against that just so that I know that I've got a good contact for that adhesive. I want to repeat that same process on the back. And so now we have many layers of that extra sturdy cardstock for the base to be good and strong. So once we have all that assembled, I want to start adding the pattern paper layers so that we'll have a nice finished look all the way around. So I do want to maintain a border of the base showing around my pattern paper. So I cut that to be three and seven eighths inch high by four and seven eighths inch wide. And I'm just gonna center that. I brought it a little closer so that I could see over top, but you can see that it will give me a nice border. And that card stock has a beautiful non-contrasting pattern. So it's really gonna read as a neutral. Now, normally I would switch right away and cover the other side, but I want to wrap my ribbon around that first. So that will be waiting for a little bit further in the video. Now the sides are going to be three and seven eighths inch high by seven eighths inch wide. So we're still gonna maintain that nice cardstock border, but we're gonna get the nice pattern paper all the way around so it's a good finished look. And I'll repeat that for this side as well. This would be a nice place if you had a layering pattern or a companion pattern. I think a stripe would be nice on here just to give it a little bit of a different look. But I really like this green and I think it coordinates well with my uh, finished look. So now that the box will be in a portrait uh, orientation rather than landscape, the bottom of the box is actually going to read as the side. So we do need to finish that as well. So the measurement for that will be four and seven eighths high by seven eighths inch wide. So now we have all of the surfaces covered that we can for now. It's time to move on to working on inserts. So we're gonna have three different styles of inserts for this box book, and then we're gonna make two of each. So we'll have a total of six. The first one is going to be an accordion style. So we'll have two folds on the inside. And so the measurement for the height of this is going to be less than the height of the box so that we can move them out easily. It's four and three quarter high now, and I'm using the full width of that paper pad. It's not going to be quite enough for the folds that I need in the tab. So we're going to have to join a couple of pieces together, which is fine because it just gives me an opportunity to layer. And so what I want to do first is bring in my scoreboard and put a couple of score lines in here for those two folds. And the first one is going to be at four inches. And then the second one will be at eight. So we won't have the full width on that last portion. And this is where we're going to join our pieces together. So I'm just gonna fold those so you can see the difference. It really isn't too much because that paper pad is almost 12 inches wide, um, but not quite. So that's okay. We can just bring two pieces together. I wanna add my adhesive to this smaller portion so that when we do join those papers, I've got all the adhesive contained between the paper layers. I won't have anything sticking out 
that could potentially adhere to another insert or another side and that way I'll be sure not to have any gluing accidents. So I'm just putting a double-sided adhesive on that. This isn't really a working fold so much as a joining of paper, so I can use that. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that we need to alternate the tabs for this so that we can have a portion in the middle between them for our trim. And so I want to make sure to line up my tabs in the direction that I want. For this one, I think I want it to be on the bottom so that they will alternate in the box. So the piece of paper that I have here is uh, four and three quarter high by four and a quarter wide. And I'm going to want to flip over this piece so that I can cut from the left hand side over. I'm gonna bring in my envelope punch board and make my first punch right along the edge of that cutting tool there. And now you can see why I am not using the regular microphone because that would be very loud. I'll just use this extra card to indicate the two and a half inch section where I want to make my next punch. This is gonna be perfect for our five inch high project. Now what I wanna do is flip over that pattern paper and bring in my guillotine cutter. You want to be very careful with this. I know my blade will stay up, but you make sure to keep your fingers out of the way of danger there. Um, but I'm just going to line up the indentation with the edge of that blade so that when I cut that off, I'll have just the tab top portion remaining and then I can bring those two pieces together. So once again, I'm just using my double sided adhesive tape, but if you prefer a wet adhesive, then go ahead and do that. But I am not patient enough for that. So I'm just gonna stick with the score tape. Now I wanna bring these together right along that score line. So just line it up along the bottom there and you'll have three portions on the inside and the bulk of that will fit within the box. So you see that will not extend beyond the edge, but the tab will. That will give you a way to pull that insert in and out easily. Now we want to utilize some of those beautiful journal cards that were included in the collection. And I think it will be nice for the ones on the cover to have a little dimension. So I'm gonna attach those with a good amount of my dimensional foam tape here and so I've got it going all around the outside edge and then a couple of pieces for the middle as well and so this is going to be centered on the cover and we'll see that beautiful fruit print and I picked a contrasting sort of pattern there it's more of a solid against the floral so that it will be a noticeable layering pattern. Now I want to utilize more of those journal cards. You mentioned I mentioned earlier that I want to get through a lot of them so I'm just going to flip those over and use the B side for some additional detail. I think this would be a nice photo mat. It breaks up that floral in the background but it is also another non-contrasting pattern. So if you wanted to write on there and do some journaling, you would definitely be able to read that very easily. Now you see the pieces on the inside. I am only going to use my double-sided adhesive tape because I don't want to add any bulk to that. So now we can see when it's folded up, we've got our tab on the side and here is the other one I've created with the exact same measurements and the exact same process. I just chose some different cards as my focal image and these will be one of our inserts. Our next insert is just going to be a basic file folder style and it is four and three quarter high by eight and a quarter wide. I'm gonna come in and score that at four inches so that 
I can have the tab top showing over the side of the box. Now I want to have my tab showing on the other side. So I'm just going to punch that on the correct side of the paper. And that way, when I flip it over, I can remove the excess and have that tab showing that will be on the top this time. So I'm just going to continue that process as I work along of cutting off the remaining portion with my guillotine cutter and then coming in with my scoreboard to put that uh, crease in. This time it's going to be just one fold so my score line will be at four inches and this will be our second style of insert for our box and I'm just making sure that I've got it folded with the outside of the paper showing. If I have only one complaint with Prima is that there are not enough patterns and too many quantity of not enough. And so I'm just kind of alternating these patterns back and forth as I work along so that I look like I have more variety. So this time I've got my journal card focal image is going to be green against that lighter color so that it will be a noticeable layering pattern. I'm still using my foam to add dimension. Here is the second one and I'm just noticing that I have missed one of the journal cards for the inside as my photo mat so I'm just gonna really quickly add that in here and that will complete the second of my two styles of inserts with the photo mats or journaling spots and I think that looks really pretty against the floral there it has a kind of weathered look so that is the second insert ready to go so you can see that I'm getting a nice variety of different looks by just alternating those papers with the focal images. Now we are gonna move on to the third and final style of insert. This one is just going to be a tabbed top tag, doesn't have any folds in it. So we can just get right to adding the tab top portion and I'll just repeat that same process and I'll slide that down to two and a half inches there and then bring in my paper cutter and remove the excess from the edge. Now I think we can all appreciate not having to listen to those tools moving in and out. I know I certainly am. So that's going to be the last cut from the guillotine cutter. I'll just move that out of the way and repeat the process of finishing my insert with the dimensional layer, the larger fruit image on the front and make sure to leave a contrast so that it will be a definite layering pattern and then add a photo mat or a journaling opportunity on the back. So I have already prepared the companion to that so that I can show you how nice they look when they're all stacked up. So as I mentioned, I'm going to alternate those tabs so that they are on the top and the bottom, leaving the indentation in the middle for my trim. As I am stacking these up, you will notice just how nicely they're going to fill in that box. If you want to include additional inserts, I think it would be perfectly fine to leave the dimensional foam off of those front images so that you could include additional paper to finish when you're working on this album. And then you can also decide if you want more of the accordion style or more of that file folder. Just make sure not to overfill the box before you've added any of the finishing details because there is no room for that to expand. So all of the bits have to fit inside there when it's finished. So let's go ahead and slide that in and I'll show you just how nicely that is going to tuck inside there. I'm going to pull those tabs apart a little bit so that you can see we'll have plenty of room 
for our ribbon to tie in between there. That will keep all of those inserts tucked safely inside. Now that we have that done, we can just work on the rest of the outside of the box. And the first thing we want to add is a beautiful taffeta ribbon. As I mentioned, we're gonna tie a generously sized bow. So pull off a nice amount of that trim. And then I do want to tack this into place temporarily while I'm working on the other layers so that it will be held where I want it to be. So I'll just add a little bit of double-sided adhesive tape. I'll remove the backing from the tape and then just press my trim into that and make sure to find your ends there. Bring them together so you know it will be centered correctly and then I'll press that trim into place. Now, unfortunately, my camera did uh, cut the sequins right there, but you only missed me finishing that front cover. I've added my pattern paper um, and that will catch us up. So the next thing I wanna add is a doily. I've just chosen this one from Fun Stamper's Journey because it's a little bit narrow. And so I know that all of those fragile bits will fall within the cover and not be on the outside. So this particular die does not have a lot of room for double-sided adhesive. So I'll just tack that down with my hot glue and that will hold it in place while I add my additional layers. So the focal image that I picked was from one of those journal cards and I did decide to cut that down with a tag shaped die that had a stitched edge. I even cut a little bit of the bottom off as well just so that more of my background will show. To finish the tag I decided to add an eyelet here, some twine through, and then I pop that up on another layer of foam spacer so that I can build dimension. You'll notice it is in the center from side to side, but it is higher than middle, just so that I can leave room for my flower arrangement, which I have created with a beautiful paper flower that coordinates with my ribbon trim. Typically I would add a stamen, but I happen to have an epoxy top brad that coordinated. So I switched that out for my center and then I've added some additional layering flowers cut from the paper scraps. So I know they would coordinate well. I've also got a little bit of loopy twine bow here, my usual netting, and some die cut leaves. This is a fairly compact arrangement, but I think it is still nice and full. I added a little bit of the trim that was the ribbon closure just as a bow on the bottom to anchor that corner. And I'll add that with hot glue just because it's a bit of a heavy arrangement. And I want to make sure that it is well secured. So just keep all of those bits inside the border of the cover and press that into place so that you know it is well adhered. Next I want to add a couple of small charms and I thought these butterflies would coordinate perfectly. I've tied those on string so that I can hold them in place and have them fall exactly where I want. So I'll just add a little bit of hot glue here and then place the string into that and that way it will capture that exactly where I want. I'll cut off the excess and then top that with a vintage button. That will help to cover the cut ends of the string. So I'm just going to add that right there. I do also want to include some beautiful little sequins. And so I chose a more vintage-y kind of shade. They're still on the lighter side, uh, but I think that it better coordinates with the vintage style of this paper collection. And so I'm going to pull three out and position them so that one of them is on top of the tag and then the final two will be on the cover itself. The best way to adhere these, I think, is to add just a bit of Tombow 
and that will hold them beautifully and dry clear. So I'll add my glue there and then press the sequins into it. And that is going to finish the cover of our box. Here's that last sequin pressed into place. Now what I want to do is trim off that little bit of excess fuzz from the string and then place my tags into it. So I think it will be a good idea to always move all the tags in and out at the same time so that they won't accidentally get caught on those dimensional layers. So I'll just add those in and then I'll tie a bow with our beautiful taffeta ribbon. And that will keep all of our inserts securely inside the box. Don't forget to come back and clip that ribbon at an angle so that it won't fray. Do that for both sides. And that is going to be all for our project today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure that you hit the like button. And if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. Check out the description for links to all of our socials. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.